welcome back. We have been exploring conceptual dependency, which is a set of predicates in terms of which we want to express uh, natural language sentences in. And we saw this example of John hit his little dog is represented between with these relations between these concepts. John is a picture producer, hit is an action dog is also a picture producer, but it's a, it, it has an objective dependency with the action and little and possessed by are this thing, uh, prepositional and attributive dependencies. So, let us look at the different ways in which conceptualizations can be constructed. We have already seen this, that a, that a, a agent can do an action. A, P, a PP can be related to an act. We also mentioned that PPs can have picture aiders. The, the rose is red, for example, if you want to say, you could do that with something like that. Acts can have objects on which they are acting upon. Acts can have a sense of direction. So, if you are talking about movement, then there can be a source location and a destination location. Acts can have a set of sense of uh, uh, a, a sense of recipients that uh, if I give you the book, then the book goes from you to me essentially. Acts can have conceptualizations as objects, especially if you are talking about mental acts. John told Peter that the house is on fire or something like that uh, would be the object of the, the telling act is itself a conceptualization. So, M trans, we will see M trans is one of the basic actions, requires conceptualizations as objects, and another uh, action called M build has its own object type. So, acts can have conceptualizations which are instrumental in terms of that. So, John went to the canteen by riding on his bike. So, the second conceptualization is an instrument by which the first act is accomplished. PPs can be described by conceptualizations in which they occur and we will see examples of uh, this thing. Conceptualizations can have times, obviously, since we are going to talk about these things, we can say this event happened at this time and they can have locations. Now, there can be relations between conceptualizations themselves. So, conceptualizations can result in state changes for picture producers. So, what you see here that this bottom part is a state change. It goes from this state to this state. Remember those three lines are stative in nature and this, th this particular diagram represents state change. What we are saying here is that something happened which is shown on the top which resulted in the state change event that we are talking about. Events or actions can influence other events or actions. So, they can be reasons for conceptualizations. Something happens and as a result of which something happens. A state or a state change event can enable conceptualizations to occur. Amaya saw that the house was burning, so he called the fire 
department something like that this we have already mentioned that one pp can be equivalent or an instance of the other essentially in logic we have already said for example biden is the president of the us acts can have action headers so for example speeds and dimensions and so on the next thing we want to talk about is state variables our goal remember is to have a compact set of predicates in terms of which you will represent other things essentially so the group at yale they define this set of state variables so for example a variable called health is a state variable and it can have a value which goes between minus 10 to plus 10 so it's a state variable can have values so obviously when you write rules to deal with them you would have to look at values of those variables and then appropriately you will relate them to other things essentially so this health variable goes from minus 10 to plus 10 at minus 10 it represents dead at plus 10 it represents perfect health and in between there is a whole range of other english language terms which maps to different levels of health essentially so gravely ill sick under the weather all right tip top and so on here is another example physical state is similar to health except that it applies to uh, to a larger class of entities which includes things like machines uh, and goes from minus 10 to plus 10 again so dead harmed injured broken harmed hurt okay so it seems to be dealing with mostly negative things here anger can also go from minus 10 to 0 at minus 10 you are furious if that's the highest level of anger that we can talk about then you have enraged angry irked upset and at 0 you are calm essentially which means you are not angry so anger level 0 means you are not angry mental state was a variable which in this program called margie which i mentioned was called joy it goes from minus 10 to plus 10 going from catatonic at one end to ecstatic at the other end with various levels of mental states depressed upset sad okay pleased happy and so on fear is a negative emotion in some sense it goes from minus 10 to 0 so you start with terrified scared anxious at 0 you are calm consciousness is in some sense a positive uh, stay positive variable so at 0 you are unconscious when you are asleep you are maybe partly conscious so it's 5 for example when you are awake it's 10 and if you have some higher level con consciousness then maybe you are more than 10 surprise goes from 0 to 10 and it can accommodate words like surprise amazed astounded hunger goes from minus 10 to plus 10 so starving ravenous could eat a horse hungry no appetite satisfied full stuffed satiated depending on what your state is disgust is a negative emotion you might say goes from minus 10 to 0 nauseated revolted disgusted bothered and so on you could also talk about compound states 
by combining variables. So, shocked could be surprised and disgusted. So, surprise level 5, disgust level minus 5. Calm could be everything is 0, surprise is 0, disgust is 0, fear is 0, anger is 0, consciousness is more than 0. So, this is the way that they represent it. They try to represent states uh, in terms of a small set of state variables and uh, you might get a flavor of uh, the way for example, in uh, Indian philosophy or psychology, uh, we talk about uh, the nine states of emotion or the, nor, the nine rasas essentially. This is done mostly in the, in the context of art and music and so on as to what is it, what is it that you are depicting. But you know all these things like disgust and anger, for example, rodhras and so on uh, are categorized into these nine categories. So, this is a little bit in that sense similar that we are trying to identify some core states and then we will give values to them to say how much of that is existing. So, next we will talk of inferences, uh, but we will do that in the next video.